In the previous videos of Hitler's Escape series, we explored the possibility of Hitler fooling the entire world and escaping to live a quiet life in perhaps somewhere else in Europe or South America. But was there ever enough evidence to prove Hitler lived? Welcome to Nutty History, and it's time to look at all the evidence and figure out what happened on that climactic day of April 30th, 1945. Did Adolf Hitler live or did Adolf Hitler die? In previous videos, we explored the possibility of locations where Hitler would have found refuge, and South America, specifically Argentina, was the best bet Hitler had. We also explored the theories that delve into how Hitler may have escaped and reached Argentina. The theory of Hitler using U-boats to cross the Atlantic Ocean and reach South America is perhaps the strongest argument authors of these conspiracy theories offer, but do they really hold their ground? Unfortunately, not. Despite the intriguing and interesting nature of this type of narrative, history with its hard cold facts always prevails and ends up destroying more entertaining versions. Two German submarines named the U-530 and the U-977 indeed arrived in Argentina after the war, but they did so in order to not have to surrender to British forces and were not part of any escapade. Simply, the possibility of any of them carrying Hitler as a passenger is next to none. In fact, there was no Nazi leader that arrived. None. Some of those who support the theory of Hitler escaping through a submarine also speak of a fleet of three U-boats that disappeared in April of 1945. But the truth is far less mysterious. The Allied fleet sank them. The U-1235 was hit on April 15th by torpedoes launched by an American destroyer. And one day later, the same happened to the U-880. On April 22nd, the U-518 met the same fate as well. Better late than never right? Another issue with the U-boat theory is its departure from Barcelona. If it did, it would have had to cross Gibraltar and elude the British radars, a feat that seems impossibly unlikely. Richard Evans, Professor Emeritus of History at Cambridge and a Fellow of the British Academy, led extensive research on all conspiracy theories surrounding Hitler's death. According to him, alleged proof of Hitler's survival crumbles into dust as soon as it's subjected to critical examination. One of the most prominent witnesses used by popular speculative documentary series is an elderly Argentinian woman, Catalina Gomera. Her account details her time working in a house where she had to leave meals for a mysterious German visitor outside his room. Now, she wasn't allowed to see him, and she claims it must have been Hitler since they were typical German meals. Sausage, ham, fish, but even a 10th grade history student can see the mistake in this testimony. Hitler was a pure vegetarian and would have never eaten a meal mostly consisting of fish and sausages. But more importantly, this is a purely speculative claim. She never saw the mysterious person for whom she served these meals, and that makes her testimony entirely uncredible. Authors and journalists like Abel Basti and Gerard Williams based their claims of Hitler's escape on the CIA's investigation and documents regarding the possibility of Hitler being alive and living in South America in the 1950s and 60s. But they conveniently skipped the fact in their books that the CIA itself was highly skeptical of the evidence presented and never took it serious enough to launch a manhunt for Hitler. Professor Evans stated in his book that the Argentinian Abel Basti's text lacked documentary evidence. All of the testimonies mentioned in Basti's book are secondhand, and the witnesses do not provide any sort of accurate evidence. Almost all of those accounts are only sayings that are almost impossible to corroborate. Most of the CIA's involvement with the possibility of Hitler living in Argentina is based on a self-proclaimed former German SS trooper named Philip Citrion's report proclaiming Hitler lived in Colombia for a month and then left for Argentina around January 1955. He also presented a photograph with an elderly person who somewhat appeared to look like Adolf Hitler. However, superiors of the CIA station who investigated this presented evidence found it flimsy and considered it a high-risk, low-reward sort of scenario, where the CIA may end up expending a vast number of resources with minimum possibility of a positive outcome. Even the independent Nazi hunters, like Simon Wiesenthal, never sought or investigated Hitler's survival or tried to hunt him down in their entire career. And these Nazi hunters searched relentlessly for most of the Nazi hierarchs who escaped Europe and ended up tracking down several of them. There could only be one reason that none of the famous Nazi hunters ever tried to seek Hitler out. He was not alive. 
While a bit of amateur historians have proposed various theories about escape plans for Hitler, historically there were never any escape plans found in the Fuhrer bunker or any other place of Nazi authority. The only plan of escape that has been revealed in all the years since the Battle of Berlin involved Hermann Göring, Heinrich Himmler, and other senior figures taking off from North Germany to continue their struggles from abroad. Captain Ernst Koenig, at the age of 93, confessed about an escape plan in 2003. It would have the Nazis evacuate their surviving leaders by flying boats to Greenland at the end of the Second World War. However, Koenig, who was drafted as a navigator in the Luftwaffe, also explicitly stated that Hitler himself was determined not to leave Berlin, where he eventually committed suicide. Interestingly, this plan was spearheaded by Himmler, who was stripped of his offices and authority by Hitler near the end of the war for attempting to surrender to the Western Allied forces. This again insinuates that if the concerned plan would have been carried forward, Hitler would either not have knowledge of it or even participated in it. The last-ditch effort described by Koenig also involved an attempt to pick up a copy of the Fuhrer's will from Berlin, but this had to be abandoned because of heavy Russian fire. Koenig said that he had just finished preparing two giant BV-222 seaplanes for the escape flight when the Allies launched an air raid and destroyed them. This implies that escaping Berlin was nearly impossible as it was heavily sieged in every manner. Terry Charman, a historian at the Imperial War Museum in London, authenticated Koenig's story because of the credibility of events in Koenig's confession, and it was also backed up by incidental details revealed by other Germans, such as Albert Speer, Adolf Hitler's architect. So if Hitler was determined to not leave his bunker, does that mean the story of his suicide is irrefutable? We narrated the official version of events at Fuhrer Bunker on April 30th, 1945 in our first video of this series, which we would highly recommend you to watch, but here's a small summary. After getting the news of the Red Army invading Berlin early in the morning of April 30th, 1945, Hitler and his new wife, Eva Braun, locked themselves in the study at 2.30 p.m. Moments later, Hitler shot himself, and Eva Braun chewed a cyanide capsule. The first witnesses, Otto Gunche and Heinz Linge, corroborated the deaths in their statements. They said they smelled a strong odor of burnt almonds on Eva Braun's corpse, an indication of cyanide poisoning. They also smelled gunpowder on Hitler's corpse along with the gunshot wound in his skull. There is a slight controversy on the skull of Hitler, as in 2009, a bone specializing archaeologist performed DNA and forensic tests on a sample of one of the skull fragments provided by Russian officials for an episode of a documentary TV show. The sample was found to be that of a woman under the age of 40. However, when the same set of researchers examined a blood-soaked piece of cloth from the sofa on which Hitler was sitting while he shot himself, the blood was said to be of a male. And here's where things get twisted. Neither Soviet nor Russian officials ever explicitly claimed the said skull was the main piece of evidence of Hitler's death. However, conspiracy theorists and books by amateur historians latched onto it and presented it as the main evidence of Hitler's death being a hoax. So if not the skull fragments, what was the main evidence of Hitler's death? Well, as they say, you can only get the truth from a horse's mouth, or in this case, Hitler's mouth. The main piece of evidence collected from the hastily burned body of Adolf Hitler was his jawbone fragments and two dental bridges. In April 2018, memoirs of a Russian interpreter revealed that she had been entrusted with the grandest trophy of World War II, a set of Hitler's teeth. She was tasked with the job of cross-checking them against the dictator's dental records, and they matched. Ever since, the Russians have been keeping these dental remains safe. After months of negotiations, Russia's FSB Secret Service and the Russian State Archives permitted a team of French researchers to examine a skull fragment and bits of his teeth. Now, the piece of the skull had a hole on its left side, consistent with a bullet wound from the Walther PPK, with black charring around the edges. Though scientists were not allowed to take samples from the skull, they noted in the study its shape seems totally comparable to radiographies of Hitler's skull taken a year before his death. But the final nail in the coffin was the analysis of the teeth fragments. At the moment of his death, Adolf Hitler had only four teeth in his mouth, which were misshapen, brown at the base, and flecked with white tartar deposits. And as the DNA matched, it's been proven that Hitler did die in 1945. Lead study author Philippe Chalier has validated that the teeth are authentic, and there is no possible doubt about it. But if there's still any doubt in the mind of anyone watching this, let's not forget Hitler himself has once said, I'd kill myself if the war was lost. Also, think about this. 
Can you imagine somebody like Hitler living peacefully in anonymity and not trying to achieve his only goal in life ever again? Tell us in the comments which other history-related conspiracy theory you'd like us to debunk in the future. Thanks for watching Nutty History.